A wet weather pattern for Central Texas over the next seven days. I'll talk about the potential for some flooding for the Mother's Day weekend. Certain makes and models of cars are being stolen at an alarming rate, and the way they're being hotwired might surprise you. What mechanics recommend to keep your car from being stolen? And we're learning more about the suspect accused of opening fire at a mall in Allen, Texas, killing eight people. What a search warrant helped reveal. Plus, a high school teacher in Austin accused of having a sexual relationship with one of his students. Live from Austin, KVU News at 10 starts now. Good Monday evening. Thank you for joining us for KVU News at 10. We begin with a live look in Round Rock out of our Kalahari camp tonight. You can see the weather's pretty clear out there tonight, but it's been a different story in other parts of our viewing area. We're joined now by Chief Meteorologist Hunter Williams to break, out, break it all down for us this evening. Hey, Hunter. Yeah, things have been relatively quiet across most of the metro this evening, but not the case southeast of Austin, where earlier we had a tornado warning for Fayette County. And then this evening, the hill country has been where most of the storms have developed. Let me take you to the radar again. Most are quiet. But if you look to the northwest, we have ongoing strong storms from Mason into northern Llano County, and then one last batch of storms coming down into San Saba County. And this is going to account for about a 30% chance for storms across the hill country tonight. For Austin, areas east of I-35, the rest of tonight will be dry, but across the hill country, still another two to maybe three hours where there's a window for a few strong storms and maybe some localized minor flooding, which we'll get to coming up in the full forecast. Now, between now and Thursday, it is scattered hit or miss storms each day. Some will get beneficial rainfall over the next three days, but beyond that, Friday into the Mother's Day weekend is when the vast majority of our rainfall is coming in. That could add up to three to six inches, maybe locally higher for some spots over the next seven days. I'll walk you through that part of our forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Hunter, thanks a lot. We'll check in with you in just a bit. As Hunter just mentioned, the rain definitely fell in some areas more than others. KVU's Darren Isha Heron went to LaGrange right after the storm to check up on conditions there. Quita Brian here in LaGrange, the Colorado River is moving at a nice pace and it appears to be full after heavy rain today. But for the most part, it appears LaGrange just got some much needed rain. We didn't see any flooding, but check out some of the video we got on the way to LaGrange. You can see the water in this creek on 154 near Muldoon was actually foaming up. It was moving so fast downstream. And on 609 near Oquin, this creek was nearly full. So despite concern for tornadoes and flooding, this area of Fayette County, like many other areas the past few days, was able to dodge damaging conditions. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you so much, Darren Isha. And to get weather alerts as they come in, download the KVU app. It's free in the App Store. Just search for KVU. The Kia Challenge is a relatively new and illegal trend circulating on social media. It involves thieves targeting Kia and Hyundai vehicles and stealing them within a matter of minutes. KVU's Ford Sanders has more from those who've become the targets of these crimes and what car experts are saying. It's another day of work at Tech One Auto in North Austin. Cars just like this Hyundai are waiting to be serviced. However, it's not for normal maintenance. We see them at least once, twice a week. So it is becoming a major problem. Andrew West, a service advisor at Tech One Auto, says it's stemming from a social media trend called the Kia Challenge. Thieves are breaking into the steering column and starting up certain Kia and Hyundai models in a matter of minutes. Without an immobilizer, anything that resembles a key can be used to start the vehicle. KVU viewer Ray Johnson sent me this video of one of these cars being dumped in front of their home in Del Valley. Police told them it was stolen out of Hayes County. Cars just like this Kia are pretty popular here in America. Well, that popularity is also making them a target. When it comes to this illegal trend that's going around on social media, thieves are taking cables just like this iPhone cord, and they're actually breaking into the car's steering column, jamming the USB side into parts that make the car actually start, allowing them to pull off in a matter of minutes. It's exactly what South Austin resident Nick Stroll went through. I had a Hyundai. It was a 2021 Hyundai Tucson. Nick parked his car at his apartment complex after work, just like any other night. However, when he went to use it the next morning, it was nowhere to be found. And I was like, maybe it's somewhere else. So I walked around the whole complex for like 25 minutes, and I'm like, my car is nowhere to be found. After a week of the police working to find Nick's car, he got the call. 
and they're like, you know, you know, hey, we just found your car. It didn't have any plates on it. It's totally damaged. Uh, looks like it was in a hit and run collision with another vehicle. Everything was there, but it was completely damaged, wrecked, smelled terrible. It's like someone was just living in it. Yeah, it was it was just a wild scenario. Last summer is when the trend began to gain a lot of traction, and Wes says they still see these issues every single day. So what can be done to deter these criminals? The club is going to be the most common. It's going to be old school tech, but it's about the only thing that's going to really prevent besides, you know, parking in a low, well-lit area. An old-fashioned fix for a modern problem. In Austin, I'm Ford Sanders. Here's your news flash recapping Monday's other headlines. State Representative Brian Slayton is resigning after an investigation found he had an inappropriate sexual relationship with a 19 year old woman on his staff. His resignation still needs to be approved. The Texas Rangers are investigating after a man was shot and killed by DPS troopers last night. The chase began when DPS officers tried to make a traffic stop on 183 in North Austin. The driver eventually got out of the car in Round Rock and then pointed a gun at the troopers before being shot. Daniel Perry, a rideshare driver found guilty of shooting and killing an armed protester, will have his sentencing tomorrow. Perry was not pardoned by the governor and recently asked the judge for a new trial, but was denied. Tesla's breaking ground on a new $375 million lithium refinery just outside of Corpus Christi. Tesla CEO Elon Musk and Texas Governor Greg Abbott were in attendance today for the groundbreaking. The company says this facility will be the first of its kind in North America. A man who police say drove into a crowd of people at a bus stop in Brownsville is facing manslaughter and aggravated assault charges tonight. Eight people died and 10 people were hurt in yesterday's accident. And authorities now believe 34-year-old George Alvarez lost control after running a red light and plowed into a crowd of people from Venezuela outside a migrant center. Police say he tried to run away from the scene, but several bystanders held him down until officers got there and arrested him. Investigators still looking into whether the crash was intentional. Police say Alvarez does have a criminal history. His bail set at more than $3 million. At least six victims from the Allen, Texas mall shooting are still in the hospital tonight, following this weekend's deadly rampage that left eight people dead. The alleged gunman died after a confrontation with police. New details emerging tonight from law enforcement about the gunman's past, including concerns about his mental health. Today we're hearing powerful eyewitness accounts of the moments they say they rushed to help the wounded. ABC's Melissa Adan reports from Al. A Saturday at the mall changed forever when police say a lone gunman armed with an AR style rifle opened fire, hitting dozens of shoppers at the Allen Premium Outlet Mall. We got shots fired at the Allen Mall. Eight people were killed, seven injured. The area hospitals near Allen says the victims range in age from as young as five to 61 years old. A military veteran whose son works at the mall says he responded within minutes, sharing with ABC's Matt Gutman a chilling account of what he witnessed as he called. 911. There was a four year old kid that managed to call out from under his somebody that was shot there and I managed to scoop him up and he was not injured that I know of. I put him in a safe place. Among those victims, Aishwara Tekikwanda, an engineer, according to ABC's affiliate WFAA and 20 year old Christian LaCour. His sister tells ABC he was an on duty security guard. The gunman identified by authorities as 33 year old Mauricio Garcia. Investigators have searched his home in Dallas. Multiple ABC law enforcement sources say this is being investigated as possible domestic terrorism. Authorities tell ABC News that in 2008, Garcia was discharged from the Army for mental health concerns. Investigators say they're poring over his social media history, finding racially motivated posts. They say he was wearing a patch with white supremacist insignia. A special caucus meeting for Senate Democrats has been set up this week to discuss gun violence and gun safety legislation. And here in Texas, a bill raising the age to purchase semi-automatic rifles is now heading for a vote in the full house. Coming up here on the News at 10, a high school teacher in Austin accused of having a sexual relationship with one of his 16-year-old students. And Governor Greg Abbott planning to send hundreds of National Guard troops to the Texas-Mexico border. That story coming up in just a few minutes.
Welcome back. All new tonight in East Austin High School teachers been arrested, accused of having a sexual relationship with a student. 27 year old David Holowin was a teacher at the Texans Can Academy. The 16 year old victim told the school she gave him her number when signing up for an after school club. That was when she says he started texting her inappropriately. Holowin is being charged with sexual assault of a child. School leaders tell KVU he's no longer an employee of the school. Now to the final days of Title 42. The Trump era policy that allowed the U.S. to immediately expel hundreds of thousands of migrants during the pandemic is set to expire on Thursday. In the meantime, officials say thousands of migrants are gathering at the southwest border in hopes of seeking asylum here in the U.S. ABC's Justin Finch has more on how authorities are preparing. At the U.S.-Mexico border, hundreds of migrants arriving days before Title 42 ends. ABC's Matt Rivers is there. What do you want to do on the other side? You want to study? The Trump era Title 42 pandemic policy expiring Thursday allows the U.S. to immediately turn away most migrants. Now the U.S. is bracing for upwards of 10,000 daily migrant crossings, according to authorities, with many already in Mexico waiting to apply for asylum. Across the hemisphere, we're seeing more people on the move than at any time since at least World War II. The Biden administration is preparing from creating additional migrant processing centers in Colombia and Guatemala to adding immigration officers and calling in 1,500 active duty troops. Texas Governor Greg Abbott saying his state is launching a tactical border force. They will be deployed to hot spots along the border to turn back migrants who are trying to enter Texas illegally. On Capitol Hill, bipartisan Senate support for a bill that would grant the Biden administration two more years of border expulsion authority, similar to Title 42, but without the health emergency mandate. Giving us some time and space for the Biden administration to do their job mm -hmm. and for us legislators to actually create a, a plan that can get through both the House and the Senate. In the House, members could vote Thursday on a Republican-led bill calling for more measures, including tighter asylum seeker restrictions, providing more funding for more agents and security technology along the border, and resuming construction on a southwest border wall. Both bills face steep odds at advancing. The White House blasting that House bill, saying it does little to address the nation's immigration and border challenges and that President Biden would veto it. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. All right, Hunter is back with us. And Hunter, I know some parts of Central Texas saw some rain. Austin, unfortunately, didn't see too much at all. It was uh, very hit or miss through this evening. There was a little bit of rain in South Austin, but by far the area that saw the most was Fayette County. We have some radar estimates close to seven inches wow. of rain on the southwest side of LaGrange. Now we'll get to that and the forecast pattern over the next couple of days is going to be kind of similar to this where we have hit or miss rain and storm chances. But I'll tell you, once we get into the Mother's Day weekend, it's not looking hit or miss. I think we have widespread rain in the forecast by this weekend. A live look from our downtown sky camera have you pointed over the Capitol building while there was rain and even a tornado warning earlier this afternoon in Fayette County. It was just hot and humid across the metro. 93 was the high today for Camp Maybury. We hit 90 today at the airport. Here's the radar right now. I 35 corridor. Nothing going on. LaGrange, which was active a few hours ago, now getting a break. But across the hill country, we still have storm chances over the next couple of hours here. This activity, certainly strong, heavy rain, lightning, maybe some small hail, Mason County into northern Lano County, but it's not severe at the moment. But I am also watching this activity rolling down from the north. This will bring a continued storm chance for Mason, Lano, and Gillespie counties between now and about midnight. And still, a few of these storms could be strong with hail potential, maybe some gusty winds and some localized heavy rainfall. Speaking of heavy rainfall, we had some of that over far northern Burnett County, but I mentioned LaGrange. Yep, this was uh, just about the big winter today. Wait for the numbers to pop on. North of Hosting, that was 6.7 inches, the radar estimate there. This prompted a flash flood warning earlier that has been allowed to expire. 
Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, the models have really, really struggled with this weather pattern. So as you look at this, I do not think that storms will be this widespread across the hill country over the next two hours, but this is going to be the zone where scattered showers and a couple of heavy storms will continue between now and midnight, maybe as late as 1230. After that, the rest of the overnight is looking quieter. Here is tomorrow morning. It's mostly cloudy, maybe a couple of showers already working up from the south for places like Fayette County. But then tomorrow we have a little low pressure system that's swinging through. Watch what that does. You can almost see the rotation and what the model is printing out with the shower and storm activity. And I think this is going to favor areas along and east of I-35 tomorrow with about a 50 to 60% chance of showers and storms. Honestly, I think what this model is showing might actually underdo the rain chances a little bit for tomorrow. So over the next three days between now and Thursday, each day is a 40 to 50% storm chance. If you get under a storm, there could be some heavy rain, maybe even some hail that you have to deal with, but it's going to be hit or miss. By Friday, that starts to change a 60% Friday, and then Saturday, an 80%, and Sunday, Mother's Day, is going to be about a 70% chance for rain. So this is looking much more widespread as we get into the weekend. And look at these totals. Between now and early next week, a widespread three to six inches of rainfall is on the way. That could give us some flooding issues during the Mother's Day weekend. It's a few days away, but just wanted to give you an early heads up. Tonight, 72, a 30% chance for storms across the hill country between now and midnight. The rest of the overnight quieting down. 85 for the high tomorrow, mostly cloudy, a little cooler. A 50% chance for showers and storms. Here's the seven day forecast. Afternoon highs after today was in the 90s, stay in the 80s for the next seven days. Hit or miss showers and storms between now and Thursday, but for the Mother's Day weekend, we do see storm chances ramp up. That could include heavy rain and again, the potential for some flooding. We'll watch it closely. So just keep those umbrellas handy. We will need it this week for sure. All Thank week long. Mm -hmm. Jeff's here to talk a little sports and we're talking about uh, some Longhorns doing some good today. I love these kinds of stories. You know, you get to know people who they are off the court, off the field, and you get to see really what they stand for. And today we also learned a little family history. Some Longhorn legends teamed up with the American Cancer Society to create a brand new event for Central Texas. We'll show you that. Plus, we go one on one with ESPN's Breakthrough Wrestler of the Year. Hear how the city of Austin has shaped the career of Ricky Starks. We have those stories and more straight ahead in sports. When it comes to personal injury attorneys, results speak volumes. Thomas J. Henry, available 24-7, nights and weekends. KVU Sports, sponsored by Davis Law Firm. When it hit, though, it just came so fast and it was so sudden. And, uh, man, it's just, it's, it's really tough. Every step of the way. Texas men's basketball coach Rodney Terry spent part of the day at UT Golf Club sharing personal stories about the impact cancer has had on his life. Coach Terry was a part of the American Cancer Society's first ever Coaches vs. Cancer Austin Golf Classic. It's a fundraiser that raised about $8,000 just today. That money will go towards lodging and transportation for individuals fighting cancer, a truly great cause. The event brought out Longhorns of the past and the present who all had one thing in common. They wanted to do everything they could to end cancer as we know it. I like to feel the impact. I like to know the impact. I like to meet the people that's really involved, that's trying to do good things and, and try to continue to build, you know, for the future. So this was a great event. The work that they put in in terms of the, uh, the effort with early detection and uh, treatment, I mean, it's just a huge deal. And we've all been affected by cancer. I lost my dad. I lost uh, my grandpa to cancer and uh, uh, just an incredible cause. Now, in addition to the event, both Rodney Terry and TJ Ford also told us about their friend, Lance Blanks, who passed away on Wednesday. I asked Coach Terry if there's anything that he will see on a day-to-day -day basis that will remind him of Lance. Oh man, me and Lance, I mean, we shared so many great memories together. Uh, but I will say one thing that he got me uh, kind of addicted to a little bit and I, uh, was Lululemon. I'd never really heard of Lululemon. <laughs> Lululemon, I had no idea about it. He's like, Archie, you have to try these Lululemon. And, uh, I've been in Lululemon ever since. I mean, I'm a big Nike guy. Don't get me wrong. Now, we're, we're, we're sponsored by Nike. But but that's one thing physically that I, you know, every day I dress in some sometimes some type of Lululemon attire. And Lance Blanks introduced me to Lululemon. <laughs> 
Top of the line workout attire. I like it. And of course, laughter is healing. Thanks to Coach Terry for sharing that story with us. To baseball and to the guy they call LBJ, who tossed a few lasers by Jayhawks on Saturday. LeBaron Johnson Jr. struck out a career-high 12 batters in seven innings of work against Kansas, earning him the title of Big 12 Pitcher of the Week. And shout out to another UT baseball player, Dylan Campbell, made school history this weekend by recording a hit in his 26th straight game. The conference streak is 35 games, so Dylan could, in theory, break that record during the Big 12 Conference Tournament. Wrestling fans, in less than two weeks, All Elite Wrestling returns to Austin, this time to the Moody Center. One of the biggest names at that event will be Austin resident Ricky Starks. Ricky is ESPN's Breakthrough Wrestler of the Year for 2022. Today, he told me that he often spends five hours a day working out. That's combined in the weight room and in the ring. It's all a part of a journey that has led him from wrestling in some of the smaller venues in Austin to a world-class facility like the Moody Center. And I used to do shows at like the Mohawk and the cold and all that. So it's great to come back to the Moody Center and uh, wrestle and perform in front of people who have been supporting me for so long, for so long. Yeah, Ricky told me that some of those smaller venues, he was lucky if there were 40 people in the audience and now they're going <laughs> to wrestle in front of tens of thousands. He did say that those smaller, intimate venues, though, they attract a crowd that is all about wrestling <laughs> and they have great yeah. memories. He told me he contacts fans now who remember moves and storylines from years and years ago. Wow, that's cool. That's very cool. I know some of those old fans are going to be watching him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rooting for a guy they've been watching for a decade. Many years. Thank Thanks, Jeff. Jeff. We'll be right back for the final look at the forecast. Welcome back. We'll get a final check of the seven day forecast. Had a couple of storms around this evening. These will not be our last storms of the week. We have a 40 to 50% storm chance between now and Thursday, so that will be hit or miss activity. But then Friday into the weekend, rain chances start to ramp up even more. Saturday and Mother's Day likely both include widespread rain and storms. Those storms could be heavy at times. In fact, a flooding risk as we get into this weekend. Between now and early next week, most of Central Texas now on track for three to six inches, if not more, of rain. Wow, so make those Mother Day, Mother's Day plans for inside. Indoors is the right idea. Thing. Give mom an umbrella maybe this year. <laughs> I like that. I just like that. Thank you for watching KB.